No, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is now just past the hour of 5 o'clock, and I will call the uh, this evening's meeting of the Appropriations Committee to order. My name is Richard Niebuhr. I'm sitting in for our chairman, uh, Tim Kalin. Because uh, he's not absent, the rest of our members are present. Uh, we'll go through our members first, starting at the end of the table here from right to left. We have Bob D'Amico. Then we have... Uh, Scott Rogers and George Brinkle, Janice Height, myself, Richard Niebuhr, and our, our assistant, yeah, our town yeah. interim in town administrator. <laughs> and one of our selectmen here. Oh, hi. That's the first. <laughs> no, huh? So the first item on our agenda is to uh, is to approval of the minutes of June 27th, 2023. I will abstain from this because I wasn't present at that meeting. Move to approve the minutes from uh, June 27th. Second. We had a, uh, a motion and a second to approve the minutes of um, June 22nd. All in favor? Any opposed? It's uh, unanimous, so the uh, minutes have been approved. The next item on our agenda is the request to transfer $8,300 from the reserve fund account to the building department salary account for augmented hours for the assistant building administrator. And I will turn this over to our... Uh, I keep getting this. <laughs> yeah. I just thought of that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you, I, I appreciate the uh, Appropriations Committee coming out this evening. We have uh, two items on the agenda that uh, I wouldn't normally have uh, called you out for, but, but they're, they're important to us right now. So the first request is for $8,300 from the Reserve Fund uh, for the Building Department uh, salary line to augment uh, the hours. For the assistant building inspector, we have a situation in the building department where we're about 30 days out in issuing permits, which is right at that cutoff. I, I don't know if you all are aware, but when you apply for a permit for any kind of construction project, if we don't answer that within 30 days, it's considered automatically issued. So in, in the midst of everything that's going on with the inspections that we have to do at the end of the of the calendar year for all of the license renewals, um, plus the backlog that we currently have for um, the, the building permits to be issued, uh, we need to add some hours in there to try to get those caught up. And speaking with the building inspector, uh, Bob Federico, he explained to me that he thinks that if we do this by the end of the calendar year, he should be caught up with all of those, those permits that are sitting there um, in his queue to be done. So uh, normally we've, we've done this, I guess, uh, in the past, but we've used funding that was left over from, you know, uh, unfilled positions. In this particular case, we don't have any unfilled positions in that department. We don't have any latitude in the budget. So there's no, really, no real place for us to go. And I would be remiss in my duties if I allowed us to uh, allow them to do additional hours without a funding source in place. So I'm here tonight asking you to transfer that, those funds to that department, mm -hmm. allow us to get caught up on the permitting process. And uh, as part of that process, I've spoken with Bob, I want, I want to sit down with him also and get a feel for the process that we're following uh, in that department to see what the, you know, how all these backlogs are, are transpiring. So it's kind of a two-pronged thing, but that's an internal processing thing that I need to do. But right now, it's just the funding that I need for that particular department. How has our per permits changed this year from last year, quantity-wise? So the permits are up. Um, Bob actually wrote a, a memo. Um, and yeah, they're up, they're up pretty significantly. They're up about 30%. I, I think what's happened is a lot of people, rather than buying new, have decided to um, re, re do their homes and either add, put additions on, you know, put different things in. We're, we're really behind in uh, HVAC um, permitting, which is interesting 
you know, the people are putting in new furnaces, high efficiency air conditioning systems, that type of thing. So there's a lot of that going on as well. So the permit requests have actually escalated uh, in this particular year uh, from prior years. Any questions? Janice? Can I make a motion to the official motion before we get any further along in it? No. Really? Um, Move to transfer $8,300 from the reserve account fund to the building department salary account for augmented hours for the assistant building inspector. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, motion has been made to uh, transfer $8,300 from the reserve fund account to the building department salary account for augmented hours for the assistant building administrator. And we have, have had a second. I'll open the floor now for discussion before we take a vote. Yes, Bob. Is the reserve uh, fund account the appropriate account? I mean, it's usually with stuff like this, we would take it out of maybe uh, like a, uh, our own account or appropriations, like for snow removal, things like that. So, Mr. Chairman, through you, I, I met with uh, Jason Little, our finance director, and we talked about this a lot, about where sh we should go for the funding. Uh, we do have a couple of accounts for salaries, um, but we also did a, uh, I guess the, the town did a re, uh, I don't know, revamping or relooking at all of the, the job descriptions yeah. for the non-union employees. Classification and compensation so reclassification. Study. So we, we've done this reclassification study and compensation study, so we know that we're going to have funds coming out of that. We have longevity payments coming up in November, and then we have uh, people who have left and we need to pay them out their accrued vacation time. So if we look at what's coming down the road for all of that, we felt it best to come here and, and take the money out of the, uh, okay. uh, so the reserve fund with your approval. a precedent that we would do start doing it out of a reserve account, that's all. I mean. Yeah, well, it, it, and this is kind of an emergency. It's an emergency situation. It's something we didn't anticipate happening. We would have budgeted appropriately right. well, otherwise. I don't in it, but still. I yeah. just was um, next year, one of the things that we've talked about also is is looking at potentially increasing the budget for that department to make that position full time, so that we don't run into this down the road. But Bob and I have to have further discussions about that. And as I said, I want to look at what the process is for doing permits because we have an online permitting system which should actually help that process along. So I, I want to get a better feel for what's going on in the department. Yes. Um, the, the estimate for what was needed was based on a number of hours. Are there any additional costs if a, an employee is moving from part-time to full-time? No, not in this case because it's not going to be a full-time position, so yeah. it, it's not a benefit-eligible position, so we don't have to worry about any okay. any of that, any of those pieces because it's still just additional hours for a part-time employee. And I see that we've already used up 100% of our stabilization fund. Yeah, a, that's that's the standard policy. Yeah, we move that we move that forward into the operating budget each year. Each year. Thank you. My my concern on it's not a, a large amount of money, but my concern on this is that the uh, appropriations fund has, as long as I've been here, primarily been used for the uh, snow and ice removal. And the last two years we've been pretty lucky with the snow and ice. We've had money left over. Before that, we've used the entire amount. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid if we use any of this now. But when it comes to the snow and ice, we'll be stuck and we'll have to, by state law, be able to carry it over until the next year. And that's going to put us pretty much in the hole. And from what I've seen, the very various meteorolog meteorological reports in that, people are expecting a, uh, a tougher winter this year. And I'd hate to see us not have these funds. And uh, I'd suggest that we look at somewhere else, possibly with the uh, ARPA funds. They said be floating around and not going anywhere. The selectmen held back using them for the fire truck, letting the townspeople pay for that. And that was three hundred and some odd thousand dollars. I think they could spend at least about nine thousand dollars for this. So Mr. Chairman, through you, there are there are different definitely other avenues that could be explored, I guess. Um, as far as snow and ice is concerned, there's multiple ways that you can close your snow and ice deficit, including using free cash, using uh, other monies from other departmental budgets that you know you're, you may not be spending. 
Um, so there's, there's definitely ways to do that. In, in other communities, I've actually cobbled together money from different places to be able to close the snow and ice deficit, including in 2015 when we were hammered with, uh, with snow. We were able to actually close that deficit by the end of the fiscal year and not carry anything over. So there are definitely, definitely different ways to do that. You don't necessarily have to take it out of your, uh, your um, reserve fund. You can take it from different places, particularly once you get past the uh, May 1st deadline or May 1st date where the new laws now will allow you to move dollars around within the operating budget for that particular fiscal year so there are there are different ways to do that if we have a bad winter i'm not really concerned about that to be honest with you the way the the budget's been structured here i think you're in pretty good shape okay any other comments from the committee okay hearing no comments or suggestions i will close the uh this portion and we'll take a vote we already have a, uh, a motion on the floor that has been seconded so all in favor of passing this, say aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank the, you very much. I appreciate that. So it's a unanimous vote that we will transfer the $8,300 to the uh, building department. Thank you. Uh, the, the next item on our agenda is uh, an additional request for a transfer of $10,000, again, from the reserve fund. And this is for a town hall postage. Um, from everything that I can gather, and I, I actually gave you a list of what we've spent for postage in the past. From what I can gather, uh, last year there were some changes to the way the budget was structured. Uh, there used to be a town hall account where everything fell from the building, the maintenance of the building, the supplies, whatever were in, was in one line item, if you will, or one account. And I guess that was split up last fiscal year, and the maintenance pieces were put into a different budget for the maintenance of the buildings, that type of thing. And then there was another account that was structured for town hall supplies and services. From what I understand, at some point, there was a discussion about utilizing funds that were left over at the end of the fiscal year to pre-purchase postage for fiscal year 24 at the end of 23. But while all of that was going on and those discussions were happening, you apparently had an issue at the fire station with the sewerage system in the fire station. So the administration that was here at the time cobbled together monies from different places, from the fire department budget, from that, that town hall budget, to pay for the fixing of the sewage system in the fire station. So that <coughs> payment of the, of the postage never happened. And when they're budgeting, they only budgeted $6,000 in that line item as opposed to where it's been in the past, which is anywhere from, I mean, if, if you look at your run rates here, it's anywhere from $11,000 to 17 or 23 in one particular fiscal year, which I think my guess is they probably prepaid some of the postage in that fiscal year because one's 23 and the next year is only five. So I, and then the following year was again 18. So I'm here to try to right a wrong that was done during the budget process to make sure that we have enough funds available so that we can fill our meter and be able to do the postage that we're going to need to do for the balance of this fiscal year. And apparently that's happened before where we've uh, not had enough funding in there and I think I think if we go with um, a sixteen thousand dollar number that's pretty much in the average of all of those years we should be able to get by the balance of the fixed fiscal year with the six that was budgeted and then the additional ten that I'm asking for this evening. Can I have a motion on this? I'll do it. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'll ask my uh, questions after. Request to transfer ten thousand dollars from the refer, uh, reserve fund account to the town hall postage account for under budgeted postage meter charges. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion uh, to transfer ten thousand dollars to uh, help uh, pay for the shortage in the postage, and it has been seconded. So I'll open the floor for discussion. There's a couple questions. Is sure. Again, looking at the, the thank you for sending that additional information. Kind of, I looked at that, and 
Uh, this year actually looks like a peak over from 15 to this year. This seems, 18,000 seems to be the most that, uh, uh, it, you know, it's the maximum kind of in that range. But one of the questions I've got is, it is amazing how much that number goes up and down. And what's driving that? What drives the poaches? And why is it, you know, 6,000 or 8,000 one year, and then the next year it's 15,000, and then the year, why does it go up and down so much? It sort of looks like a very out of control process. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, through you, I, I'm not sure what the drivers are with that because I'm not sure what actually goes through the postage meter here. I know that for like tax bills, that's all a completely separate account that comes out of another, another place. Um, what we actually mail out of here is, you know, I, I, I really don't know. I just tried to look at, you know, where we are on an average. In an average year, we're anywhere, like I said, 17, 10, 17, 11, 16. So I figured 10 to add to the six that we had. I think it was six that we had originally. If you look so at the come up to sixteen thousand. Considerably lower. And if you look at the standard deviation, it's the standard deviation is like seven thousand dollars, six thousand dollars. Well, I think Mr. Chairman, through you, I think the biggest deviation here was twenty twenty fiscal year twenty twenty one to twenty twenty two, where we went from twenty three thousand to five thousand. And my guess is that they prepaid some of that postage in 2021 for 2022. So that last payment of $5,000 at the end of 21, my guess is that was helped fund the postage for 23. So if you take that one out, it was 18 for one year and 15 for the next. So it's, it really is pretty much in that Fifteen, sixteen thousand dollar range for for your postage for any given year, but there's a lot of there's a lot of materials that go in and out of this building. Uh, and, and then another question that you mentioned is that part of this is due to the kind of basically the budget being spread, categories being spread out, and so you know there were these categories, and then so much of the category was allotted to A, and the other part was allotted to B, kind of thing. Uh, Again, would this be a matter of that's because you didn't allot enough to postage and it, there, there's an excess somewhere else and aren't we, aren't we using that? No, uh, Mr. Chairman, through you, no, there wasn't an excess in another line item. It was an oversight as the budget was being crafted. When they weren't able to prepay the postage, no one ever went back, to the best of my knowledge, looking at all of this, no one ever went back and adjusted the budget. I wasn't here, so I really don't know what transpired. but. I could pretty much guess that someone, it was just an oops, it was somebody missed a line and should have put some funding into that particular line item and never did. Okay. So best I can figure. Yes, Tim. Would it be worthwhile to then take a look at the way, what, what is going on in postage and, and look at ways to smooth that year on year? Uh, and Mr. Chairman, through you, I, I'm not sure there's there's a way to actually smooth that out because it's going to be it's going to be generated by, you know, elections because I'm sure the, the stuff that goes out there, um, you know, uh, when we're doing notifications for abutters, that type of thing. So a lot of it, a lot of it is based on things that are happening within the town for whatever it happens to be. If it's a zoning issue and we're sending stuff out to abutters that's going to create a, an expense if it's a planning issue and they, you know, planning item and they need to, to notify people. So it really is dependent upon the activity in town. I, you know, I, I've been in this for a while and no two days are ever alike, no two years are ever alike, um, no two months are ever alike. You just don't know what's, what's going on because of the demand for the services uh, within the community. It just, it's very difficult. I mean, a, a budget is a, is a best guess at what your expenses are gonna be based on prior knowledge. If you look at what your trending is and you look at what your, uh, what your spend has oh, been, you try to take a best guess and you know, throw a dart at it and hopefully yeah, the you, you're hitting. I mean, some, of, some of our um, models are look at the past five year yep. average and use yep. that in the budgeting process. Yep. Maybe shifting to 
a little bit of a model that says, oh, election year needs to be plus three grand, and then our last five-year rolling average, or something like that might be a, a method to, yeah, to anticipate. Like this, yeah. yeah, Mr. Chairman, through you, I think your, your departments should understand that. I mean, I certainly do. When I'm, when I'm putting together a budget, one of the things I'm always looking at is my trending. Uh, and I've done that my entire career in the private sector, in the public sector, it's the same thing. So you're looking at what your trending is and what your what kinds of things are coming down that you know about, but then there's always that thing that you just have no idea that it was even hanging out there and all of a sudden it hits you. And I, I'll give you an example. Last, when I was in North Attleboro, um, we turned our air conditioning system on the last week of June and it blew up. Who knew? You know, and now I'm scrambling trying to figure out how I'm going to be able to, to get through that whole situation. And it happened to be the year where it was 90 degrees in, in, in July. So you just never know. Stuff happens. It just comes up and gets you. And you, don't, you can only plan for so much. But there's, I, one thing I have found is that in this business, there's no such thing as average. There just isn't. I wish there was. It would make my job a heck of a lot easier. But it's, there isn't. And I guess it kind of proves the point overall of why there's a reserve fund. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's for emergency stuff that crops up that you had, you know. Yeah, it's got, uh, the budget's basically a plan, and plans change. And, Absolutely. You know, that goes without it. Yep. Uh, I guess what's a little surprising is two things. One is uh, this is relatively early in the fiscal year to fund mm -hmm. for this to be happening, and that's kind of a concern. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second is, it's like if you look at it as a percent of the overall budget, these are really, really small numbers. Now, part of it is you can say they're really small numbers, so let's not spend too much time on it. But if we're doing this already, you know, that's a con that, that's a concern to me that you know, because basically what that says is, hey, this wasn't planned for, it, and they are really small numbers, and there's no other flex anywhere at all in the entire budget, and that's. That's a little concerning. Yeah. So, so, Mr. Chairman, through you, um, one of the things we can't do mm -hmm. is once we've gotten past town meeting, and I'm sure you're all aware of that, yeah. we can't transfer between budgets. We're, we're restricted to that. So we can't, for instance, transfer money from the health department to the building department or from the uh, family and youth services to the town administrator's office. We're not allowed to do any of that without going back to town meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, which again is why the reserve fund exists yeah, for those for those hoopses. Those are relatively big categories. Uh, they are, but if you if you consider what your budget is, how your budget is constructed, uh, and every town is like this, so you know you're no exception. Um, Seventy-five percent of your budget goes to education. Should be education. Yeah. Eighty-five percent of what's that twenty-five percent that's left over is salary related. Mm -hmm. The other 20, 15 percent is your actual expense piece. So while you may have, your budget may look fairly large for a particular department, the majority of that cost is uh, personnel related. And they're, they're, the, you, know, you don't have any latitude there. You've got to pay your people for doing what they do. So, uh, But you're right. Uh, this, is, this is unusual, I think, and particularly in looking at the history of this particular community, this is very unusual that someone would have an oops like this in the in the budget budget process. But I'm also in a position where we can't let the meter run dry because then we can't mail anything, and we're running down the street buying stamps, which is that's not that doesn't work either, you know. Yeah. And then trying to get reimbursement somehow. So that's why I'm here. Thank you, though. I appreciate that. According to our, uh, the list you supplied us here, it looks like. Uh, the postage was six thousand dollars, which we have used up already. Yeah. But in office supplies, there's a nine thousand dollar budget, and they've only used seventeen hundred dollars worth already. There's mm -hmm. seven thousand two hundred left. Mm -hmm. Under the telephone, there's a budget of thirty thousand dollars, and they've only used six hundred dollars. And under office machine maintenance, there's a budget of over thirty-seven thousand, and they've only used six thousand. It looks like there's a lot of places there that it, just any one of them. Would pay for this. 
Um, and they're all, they're all coming under the office uh, area. Yeah. So, Mr. Chairman, through you, that, that could very well be. I'm just not sure what, why those numbers are the way they are. I didn't craft the budget, so I don't know what the, what the thought process was. And, and if these are expenses that are going to hit us later in the year, I don't know what the contracts are that fund any of this. I, I have no idea. So it's, it's very difficult for no. me to. I mean, under office supplies, I, I should think postage should fall under that. But there's $7,200 left in office supplies. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the telephone is a lot. Maybe we could borrow some, from, switch some from there to the postage right now, and if they run short later, then we can come back and look at our funds taking it out instead of taking our funds out at this time. So, Mr. Chairman, through you, that's, that's fine by me. Um, I can certainly do another look if, if the Appropriations Committee is so inclined and is uncomfortable to doing this. I can look for, uh, I can sit with the um, Finance Director and have a conversation with him about that. I'm, I, again, I didn't craft the budget. I don't know what the thought was behind all of that. I don't know what the run rates have been for any of those line items, so I have no idea where those are actually going to come in. But I can certainly go back and, and speak with him. I just, you know. It's up to you. You're, you're, you're the committee. You hold the strings. I'm not strength. trying to make a lot of work for you or no, anything like that, but just a little concerned about this. As I said, as early in the season as we are, and as Rick mentioned, we're looking at a potentially, and you never know with the weather, but, uh, you know, so uh, again, kind of having this come up so early was kind of like a, mm -hmm. takes you back a little bit. Uh, Mr. Chairman, through you, it took me back a little bit, too. I hadn't anticipated this myself walking in the door. I was, I was told something else. Yeah. Myself, right now, we're, I can see these other spots that we could probably we could borrow or move some funds from. Uh, I'd rather wait till later in the year, and we can always come back. If say we take it out of the uh, office supplies fund, if they run short later in the year, we can take it out of our reserve fund at that point, out of our uh, appropriations fund. And Mr. Chairman, through you, I'm fine with that. If that's if that's the the will of the committee, we'll figure out a way to do this, and you know we may be back, but. Uh, yeah. Any other comments? Okay, motion has been made and seconded to uh, transfer $10,000 from the reserve account to the town hall postage account. All in favor? All opposed? It's unanimous that it is opposed and the uh, transfer will not be approved at this time. Thank you. Would you like a motion to adjourn? Uh, like well, case? first, do we have any other business to come before the committee? This is just kind of a, uh, a question going forward. I realize we're in we're in kind of a transition year, et cetera. Uh, you know, your interim, et cetera. And usually, about this time of year, we're starting to hear about plans to budget going forward into the next year, kind of thing, and you know, what's being done. And we'll get a copy of the you know the, the budget manual, et cetera. And I was just wondering how we're looking at that. Uh, you know, during the pandemic, we ended up with a year where it was a very compressed schedule for us to deal with the budget. And uh, uh, it would, I'm hoping we don't kind of have the same thing. So I was just wondering a little bit if you could share your thoughts on where we're going with uh, planning for this year, because April's going to be here before we know it. Yeah, so, uh, Mr. Chairman, through you, uh, I had that conversation, that very conversation today with uh, uh, with Jason, our finance director, and we were actually talking about uh, what we need to do there. What I need him, though, to focus on at the moment is closing the books for fiscal year 23. We still haven't closed our books for 23. Okay. So until we close, I'm sorry, for 20, yeah, 23. Right. I need him to close those so that we can set the tax rate. So right now I've got him focused on that, and then once we get through that, Hopefully he's still here. He's here through the end of October. He starts in um, Westboro the first week in November. So uh, Jason Little, Jason Little is leaving the town. Jason Little has resigned. Uh, he's taken up a position with um, Westboro, so he'll be leaving us and going to Westboro the beginning of November. So I'm trying to find an interim uh, and a full-time person for that particular role. So. Um, and then I don't have Becca. I don't know what John did for budgeting. I know how I handle the budget. 
Um, it may be a very different budget process that you see this year, uh, only because for me to try to get up to speed on all the things that John was doing for his budget process may be very difficult for me, particularly where I'm only working part-time. I'm only here a few hours a week. Um, so you may see something very different, but I'm going to try to get something as soon as possible. But there's a lot of moving parts going on right now within Town Hall, and it's a little, little um, it's going to be challenging uh, as we move forward for that process. John was everywhere at once, and the only thing I think we really know about John is that his budgets he did very conservatively. Mm -hmm. So we had, we always had a little escape room somewhere. So, Mr. Chairman, through you, you will find that I am probably as conservative, if not more. How long will you be here? Uh, I will be here until uh, they, the select board hires a new town administrator or uh, six months, whichever comes first. That can't be extended. Not by your charter. It's, it's, three, it's, two, it's a three-month appointment under your charter with an additional three months um, approval by the board. You're not going to be here for a town meeting. <laughs> if I do the math, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. So I mean, some, <laughs> there, there are options. I don't know, you know, what the select board's going to want to do uh, at the end of my contract. There are ways to do different things. I I'm mean, just looking at six months, roughly, even yeah. starting now, kind of thing. And, yeah. Uh, so this is going to be a very. This may be worse than the pandemic for planning this. It, it could be. It doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be. If we all work together and we row in the same direction, I think we'll be okay but we need to make sure that we're all on the boat and we all know where yeah. we're going. Yeah. And I think if, we're all, if we all do that, then we'll be fine. Um, again, it may not look like the budgets that you've seen in the past, um, only because there's all kinds of forms and stuff out there that, that John used that I may not necessarily use. It might be a much more condensed version, but at least give you an opportunity, not a condensed time frame, but maybe a condensed package that you get. If we could get involved earlier rather than later, that would mm -hmm. be a help. We will, I will do everything I can to do that. Thank yeah, you. I will tell you my, my normal process is I'll do a, an overall revenue and expense projection. It's actually a fairly large spreadsheet that I like to use that gives me all, shows me all of the revenue um, revenue sources, and then mm -hmm. on the other side of that is all of the expenses to see. To right. try to make sure that we have a balanced budget, first of all, right. and then the detail is then put into munis from the department heads, um, okay. and then you know reviewed and submitted. So we wish you well. Yes. Thank yes. you. Thank you. It's 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 okay. I like this. Well, was it, this was a fairly fast meeting tonight, and we do have one observer in our audience. I'd, uh, I'd ask if they have uh, would like to make a comment on anything that we discussed tonight. Well, I'd, I'd actually like to ask you a question because um, the concerning um, an appropriations that we made at town meeting in 2023. I don't think we can actually. This would be on anything we had discussed tonight. We can't go on to you know off topics. Well, it's just a quick. When you write um, to be used by the end of fiscal 2023. When is the end of fiscal 2023? Fiscal 2023, the way I understand it, fiscal 2023 ended June 30th, 2023. Okay, that's what I we are now in fiscal year 2024, which will end June 30th. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, through you, that unless the, um, as far as the spend is concerned, the, the whatever, whatever it's for has to be, it's, so if it's goods and services, they have to be delivered by June 30th. We may not necessarily pay that invoice until after that, so we encumber those funds through right. the through the system, uh, through the purchase order process, and then pay those after the close of the fiscal year. But it's usually you have to have the good or service it needs delivered. To be encumbered in 2023. Yeah. Right. So you encumber the end of 2023, and then you right. can pay it up through a point in time in fiscal 24, unless it's an article, and then an article is completely different because then it's it's not considered part of the uh, annual appropriation. Okay. And if it isn't, if it's an article, but it isn't, that's different. 
if it's, if it's an article that's voted at town meeting for a specific project, mm -hmm. that article can f roll over year over year until that project is completed. If it's a, if it's a part of the original appropriation for the operating budget for that fiscal year, the good or service has to be delivered by the 30th of June of that fiscal year, and then you can pay the invoice after the 30th as long as you've encumbered the funds while you wait for the invoice to come in from the vendor. Okay, so it's not really yeah. Right. Okay. We're getting more involved. <laughs> Better understanding what's going on. Because we'd like to be able to work with you. We'd like to be able to get together and we'd like to have a vision on what, what's going to happen in the future with so many new employees that are still coming on and have to add it on. Um, we have to look at that because we're going to have some changes. And we're always well, there are people uh, observing, and if you, any of the selectmen or, and, or your appointee would like to comment on anything or bring something up, if they would give that to us in advance so we could put it on the agenda, okay. then we can go in and speak about it. Okay, great. Well, now I'm your liaison, so if you have any questions, you can always come to me and uh, <laughs> see what I can do. Thank you. Janice? <laughs> well, just just a quick comment because no. it was it, it wasn't well known that that Jason would be departing. Yeah. So I just want to acknowledge his service to the oh, town. Oh, yeah. yes. going to be a big loss, especially yeah. you know in terms of appropriation and and his role of finance Absolutely. director, Great town account. So just cheerfully done. So, Mike, if you would, if you'd kind of express those. Yeah, uh, certainly. Those, yeah. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, through you, I'd, I'd also like to, to thank Jason for his service to the community. And he's been um, a true professional uh, through this whole process. He is committed to making sure that the transition is smooth, uh, including if he needs to, uh, giving us some time after he's moved on for the person that's coming in uh, to, to take over the reins. So. Uh, he's been a, a true professional through the whole process, and I want to thank him also for his service to the community. And, and just the month that I've gotten to know him, um, I'm, I'm impressed with the way he's, he's done this. His, the books and records of the town are well, uh, well handled. Yeah. yeah. Any, anything else? There ain't no, uh, no other business to come before the committee. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. The motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Unanimous vote. <laughs> the meeting has adjourned at 541.